All right, what's going on everyone? In Nux, we have two composables, use fetch and use async data to handle data fetching within our applications. Use fetch is going to be the most straightforward way to perform data fetching, while use async data allows you to wrap your asynchronous logic for more complex calls. And this can be extremely useful in working with third-party libraries like Superbase, or if you wanted to make multiple API calls within your component. And under the hood, use fetch is actually nearly equivalent to use async data. It's just some DX for the most common use case. Now, by default, Nux uses view suspense component under the hood to prevent navigation to pages until all asynchronous functions have been resolved. To see this in action, I've created a server route to fetch some products from a third party API and then delayed the return by two seconds. And inside of a page called products, we're using the use fetch composable along with the keyword await to make the request and then output these products inside of our template. Inside of our application, if we attempt to navigate to the products page after the application has been hydrated, you'll see that we're going to wait on the home page until the API has resolved and then we'll be navigated to our products page. Now, Nux also provides a built-in component called Nux Loading Indicator that we can use to show a progress bar while navigating between pages. And this can be useful to let the users know that something is happening. We can add this either in the app.view file or if you have layouts, you can add it within there. Then when we navigate to our products page by default at the top of our application, we're going to see that progress bar. Now, although this component is useful to let the users know some action is occurring inside of the application, in my opinion, the default behavior preventing navigation to pages while waiting for asynchronous functions to resolve does not make for a great user experience. What would be ideal is navigating to that page immediately and providing a user some sort of loading state. And both use fetch and use async data allow for this by providing an options object parameter and passing the property of lazy and setting that to true. This will then expose a pending variable in which we can use to display a loading state to the user while waiting for the asynchronous functions to be resolved. So on the products page, let's add the object param to the use fetch composable and pass in the lazy property and set that to true. We're also going to want to destructure the pending variable from the return response. Then in our template, we can wrap the product cards in a new template and use a vif and vls directive with the pending variable to properly implement a loading state. And back in our application, if we navigate to the products page again after the application has been hydrated, we're going to be immediately taken to the route where we're going to see our loading state and after the async function resolves, we'll see our data. To take this a step further and improve the look of our UI, we could use the Nux UI library and create a simple skeleton for the layout using the use skeleton component. If you don't have Nux UI installed, you can do it very easily with this command here, which will not only install it, but it's also going to add it to your modules in your Nux configuration. So to start, we'll just want to clone the existing markup for the product cards and replace the image and text with the use skeleton component and configure these with a proper height and width. For the v4 loop, by default, I have the limit set to be 10 products on the API endpoint. So we can update this v4 loop to say in 10 instead of referencing the products array. This will then create 10 instances of our skeleton markup. Then if we re-navigate back to our products page, we're going to have a nice skeleton outline of the UI while waiting for our asynchronous function to resolve. And in my opinion, this approach makes for a much better user experience than blocking the navigation. And also when we load this page in for the first time during SSR, the data will still be there. Now, as a quick tip, instead of having to define this options object param for the lazy property, Nux also provides two additional composables called use lazy fetch and use lazy async data. These accomplish the same thing as passing the property and the options object parameter, but can make your code a bit cleaner if you were only using that single property. Also, one more thing that I would like to point out is when you're using either the use lazy fetch composable or the param option with use fetch, you don't actually need to include the keyword of await in front of the composable. It's not going to affect anything if you do include it, so if you would like, you could remove it, but I personally just tend to keep it for consistency purposes, as it's not going to affect anything regardless if you include it or not. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for this video. Definitely let me know what your thoughts are on this approach to handling data fetching. I think it just makes for a much better user experience after the application has been hydrated. But anyways, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like on it and subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.